Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I have been avoiding filming this video for a long time. I'm going to be honest with you. Unearthly Cosmetics is one of my favorite brands. I think they do phenomenal products and especially their eyeshadow formula is top tier to me. And I am going to be ranking all of my Unearthly palettes from my least favorite to my most favorite. I've been avoiding this because it has been so hard for me to choose one on top of the other because so many of them are some of my favorite palettes in my collection. And really this is all based on my own preference a lot of the time. There's very few palettes I've ever tried for them that weren't good quality. So I just wanted to say that off the bat. But of course, as I'm going through these palettes, I would love to know your thoughts. Like what are your favorite palettes from Unearthly? Leave me like your top three in the comments or something. I would really appreciate that. I am gonna link all of the available palettes down below in the description box because not all of them are available. I'm going through every palette that I own from them. So it could be old, new, everything in between. And also everything that is on my face will be in the description box. The links in my description box are affiliated. And if you are shopping at Unearthly and you wanna save 10%, you can use my affiliate code, Rachel. It will save you 10% on your purchase. Also, when I pop up the swatches of the palettes, I am going to put the letters PR up in the corner and that will tell you if I received the palette in PR from the brand. If it doesn't say PR, that means I purchased it myself. I love so many of these palettes, like I already said, picking between my favorites was very difficult. I know people say that all the time. This ranking was so difficult. This ranking was so difficult. But enough jibber jabber, enough avoiding the subject. Let's get to the ranking. I will just start off by saying before I get to the to the ranking, I know this is the longest intro ever. I do feel that the era of their eyeshadows from the first time I tried them was probably about, I wanna say three, three and a half years ago, all the way up to today. Their formula has changed quite a bit, particularly in their shimmers. So I do feel like a lot of my ranking, the older palettes are down at the bottom, mostly because of their formula change. Like their palettes are coming out with now, just the formulas are absolutely unbelievable. So many of the palettes that I have in the newer formula, it's really just based on color story preference when it comes down to it, because their palettes nowadays are very, very consistent in the formulas. So just wanted to throw that out there. By the way, I did get blood drawn today. That's why, that's why I have this funky looking thing on my arm. Okay, coming in at number 23. I have these three quads from their mystery box, their Halloween mystery box. I believe this was the very first mystery box that they ever did. What year was it? I want to say, was it 2022 or 2021? I'm not 100% sure. But these were the original quads from their original mystery box. This is when they really changed the game. This is their first mystery box that they released where they curated a collection specifically for a mystery box. Up until this point, and even still to this day, many brands just kind of throw in clearance items, items that are in stock on their website that they're trying to get rid of. But this was a curated collection specifically for the mystery box. This is Creepy Crawly, the green. I do actually really like how these are laid out because they have three mattes that go light, medium, deep in terms of gradient and then one shimmer. I love a matte heavy palette. I love the green and purple color stories a lot. I love green and purple. I will say the one that's called Thirst, the red one, I had a really, really hard time working with these mattes. They were very hard to blend, which can happen with red mattes, but they were just almost too pigmented and not blendable. I actually did a look with this. I had to wash it off and do it over again. It's very rare that I would do that. So yeah, I mean, usually I can salvage a situation, but I couldn't with this one. But these also came out several years ago and their formula has improved. I like the idea of quads. I hope they do quads in the future or like smaller palettes with their new formula because I think they would be great, but just did didn't get along with this formula very well. Coming in at number 22, I have the In the Dark palette. Again, this is definitely an older palette from them. I got this several years ago when, actually it wasn't when it first came out, it was when it was re-released. Again, I wanna say 2022, something like that. This was one of their Halloween collections from several years ago. And this is more of like a color story thing. I really don't go for blues. I know if you've been here before, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. I'm just gonna like, look at Ringo's head is in the shot. Man, he really just always wants to be up here when I'm filming. Uh, yeah, 
the, just the color story is a little gray toned, a little blue toned, even like, yeah, there's like an actual like slate blue gray and navy blue. Uh, I didn't really have a problem working with these shades. I think that their matte formula has improved since this, but I don't think I had a problem with these. I also don't love these shimmers. Again, it's the old formula, so they're not as shiny, not as impactful. So yeah, I, I don't love this palette. I don't hate it either, but it's coming in pretty low in the countdown for those reasons. Coming in at number 21, I have the Strawberry Milkshake palette. This is a very old palette. In fact, I bought, I, I can't even remember when I bought this. Years and years ago, their old like font is on here. I think that was just after they switched from Alien Cosmetics to Unearthly Cosmetics. The color story is actually so, so beautiful. Super bright and fun for spring, but uh, again, it's just more of a uh, old formula thing. I think the mattes in this are fine. They're pressed pretty hard in the pan, so they don't pick up super easily on a brush. And the shimmers in this are pretty lackluster. The old unearthly formula where it's really not that shiny. This is almost more of like a satin shade. This one is, yeah, just kind of thicker and heavier on the lid. Not super shiny, not the worst shimmers I've ever used, but again, I think comparing to their newer formulas, it's not even coming close. I like the color story of this one. It's not really a color story thing. It's more just like the formula. Coming in at number 20, I have the Sleepover palette. This was their Valentine's Day release. I wanna say 2022, something like that, quite a while ago. I love the cover art and I love the cover art in general from Unearthly Cosmetics. I feel like they do such fun art. They hire different artists for their different collections. So this is really, really fun. I really like the color story. It is more typical Valentine's Day, pinks, berries. This shimmer in the middle, Laughter, is an absolutely beautiful duochrome that's like white to gold. It is an absolutely gorgeous inner corner highlight. I do feel like, again, I don't think that the quality of this is as good as their newer palettes, but I definitely feel that it's a step up from the one that I mentioned last, which was the Strawberry Milkshake. It is getting better. And I, I really like this color story a lot. I didn't really have any problems working with this. There are just other palettes I prefer over this. That's the only reason it's coming in here. Coming in at number 19, I have the Charmer palette. This is a pretty recent release. I don't think it was released this year, but it was last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no problems with the quality on this one because it is the new Unearthly Quality where it is just 12 out of 10 mattes are blendable and very pigmented. Shimmers are just so wet looking, so sparkly, some special shades as well. Uh, absolutely stunning. Uh, my only thing with this is I don't love the color story and I do feel like the mattes are pretty mid-tone. There's not a lot of depth. I love a light, medium, and deep gradient in my mattes. It's just how I do my makeup. I'm kind of just stuck in my ways. So not a huge variety in depth and just color story-wise, there's some blues, there's some like brighter pinks. I do like purples. And then there is this like kind of gray shade. Not my favorite, but still a really great quality palette. If you like this color story, you would really enjoy this. I don't know that this is available anymore, but uh, great quality, just a color story preference. Coming in at number 18, I have the Dead of Night palette. This one is another kind of blue purple color story, but I do like this one a little more because I do feel like there is a little bit more of a gradient in the mattes. There are some lighter tones. There's a lighter purple, there's a lighter gray. So we have a couple of pops of slightly lighter, but again, nothing really super light. There's nothing in here I would use as an inner corner highlight. The shimmers in this are absolutely gorgeous. And one thing I do like about this palette in terms of the shimmers is they are mostly just like regular shimmers. I think maybe there is one duochrome, but there's no multi-chrome. I don't need a palette full of multi-chromes. It's not my preference. I really like just like to have really pretty shimmers, maybe one or two pops of a special shade. So if you're looking for more of just like a standard shimmer with a bunch of mattes, it's very matte heavy, and you like this color story, I think you would like it. Great quality, just color story wise, I like some other things more. Coming in at number 17, I have the Spaced Out palette. This was one of their Summer Mystery Box palettes from 2023. They had a small mystery box and a large mystery box. So this came in the small mystery box. Love the cover art, love the theme. It's a little more bright and vibrant for the brand. And on the inside, we have this color story. Again, quality wise, absolutely no issues. 
phenomenal shimmers, phenomenal mattes. My only kind of thing with this is I don't really feel I can create too many cohesive looks with just this palette that are to my liking. The mattes are a little bit jumbled. It's hard to pair them together. Maybe like one or two paired together is okay, but I can't really do more than two mattes in my look with I just use this palette. I'm really trying to judge these based on standalone palettes alone. Uh, of course, I can pull in other things. I will, I do, all of that. But as a standalone palette, just the color story is a little jumbled. Coming in at number 16, I have the other palette from the other summer mystery box. This is the Get Groovy. Again, love the cover art, super fun for the summer. And this is actually the only like rainbow-esque palette I have from the brand. They have done other rainbow-esque palettes in the past, but this is the only one that I personally have. I think this one is laid out very well, especially for a bright rainbow palette that is a little more curated down. You have very clear, quads that you can create cohesive looks with. And of course you can mix purples and blues really easily, greens and yellows really easily, even this. So it's laid out in a way that makes a lot of sense to me personally. Uh, again, quality wise, absolutely phenomenal, but I'm never gonna place like a rainbow palette at the very top. Well, I shouldn't say never because the Blend Bunny Blends palette is my favorite Blend Bunny palette. But that is the exception. <laughs> that is the exception. It's, it's going to be a rare day I would put a rainbow palette at the very, very top just because I love neutrals. I love neutrals with a twist. And this is not neutrals with a twist. This is bright and shiny rainbow. So yeah, a really good palette. I'm really happy to have it in my collection, but not like an ultimate favorite. Coming in at number 15, I have the Resurgence palette. This one was in collaboration with Heather Austin. This was the very first palette I got in PR from Unearthly, and I was over the moon, first of all, because I had loved the brand for so long and because I had been an avid follower, an avid watcher of Heather Austin. So I was super excited to receive this in PR from them. Super fun. So love the theming on this. I think the theming is spot on for Heather. It's very science-based, it's very nature-based, which is her thing. And I love the cover art on this. And then on the inside, we have this really fun color story, a little dark, but also a bright pops as well. This was where the, uh, the formulas started to really amp up, get a little bit better. The shimmers in this are super pretty, really shiny, much more stepped up from their original palettes. The mattes in this work great for me. I absolutely love this shade called Life. It is a satin shade that is perfect for the inner corner. I think more palettes should come with a satin shade like this. Sometimes I don't want a bright, shiny, duochrome inner corner, but sometimes I want to make it a little more shiny than a matte, and this is absolutely perfect. She put it in also as a mixing shade, which I think is genius to have in a palette. So yeah, a phenomenal palette, really well done palette, and it holds a special place in my heart. Coming in at number 14, I have the Devour palette. Again, this one came out at the end of last year, so it is the newest formula from the brand and love the cover art. I always love when they put like a sexy badass woman on the cover. It just, it makes me happy. And this is what the color story looks like. Now this is right up my alley in terms of neutrals with a twist. I would absolutely call this neutrals with a twist. The top row is definitely more neutral leaning. We have that brown, we have that burgundy. And down here we have some pops of green, which I really enjoy. We have some special shades as well, some regular shimmer shades as well. Yeah, this is great. My only kind of thing that I want to, I don't want to say complaint, but my only thing that I would change about this is the fact that all of the mattes are pretty mid-tone to deep. There's no real light matte here. Uh, I guess you could consider this leaning light, but I want to, I'm just, listen, I'm boring, okay? I just love to have like a light, slash mid-tone brown. Now again, can I pull into another palette for that? Absolutely not a problem. But if I'm gonna like pick my favorite palette that has everything I need in it, it's kind of lacking in this, but absolutely gorgeous uh, quality palette. I do really like the color story, but kind of more mid-tone to deep in the mattes. Coming in at number 13, I have the Don't Be Jelly palette. Yeah, all of the ones that are in this more rectangular packaging um, that came out in the last year or so, great quality, great quality. I love this format from them as well. I think it's a really good amount of shades where you can create quite a few looks, but it's not so overwhelming. The shimmers in this are just so beautiful. I remember when I received this and I got it in the mail and I was swatching the shimmers, I was 
blown away. So hydrospace, like, are you joking? Look at luminescence. Ultra shine, look at that. <gasps> this was the first palette with this like new, new formula. I remember trying and, and swatching these two shades out in particular. I was, my jaw was on the floor. I was just like, are you joking? These shades are freaking beautiful. And I am more of a matte girl. Like I love good mattes. I could have a palette with you know, 75% mattes and just a couple of pops of shimmer and I'm happy with it. So when I'm like blown away and like super excited about a shimmer, you know, it's good. You know, it's good. Yeah. For me, I just have other color stories. I prefer over this. That's the only reason it's coming in here, but yeah, the, the shimmers in this are, are so beautiful. Coming in at number 12, I have the surrender palette. We have the sexy badass lady on the cover. Gotta love that. And then on the inside, we have this gorgeous color story. For me, it's a color story thing. I love this color story. And I wish that they would come out with this in their newest formula. This is like the second to last wave of reformulation. This is like the Heather Austin palette where the shimmers are stepped up from their previous like old formula. The mattes are good. These ones are a little hard pressed in the pan, but that is fine with me. But the shimmers are good. They're just not like the great, 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 great formula from Unearthly, but I just love Neutrals with the twist, you have very true like brown neutrals over here, and then some pops of rosy tones. If you are more of like a neutral lover, this is one of their few kind of neutral leaning palettes. Again, don't think it's available anymore, unfortunately, but yeah, the color story top tier for me. Uh, formula, not top tier, but still very good. So from here on out, it was very hard to rank them. Like very, what number are we on? We're on number 11. Yeah, so from 11 upward, I do feel like a lot of these could be interchangeable. I think like the top five, maybe not, but very, very, very good quality palettes. Um, if I'm looking for these color stories, these are the palettes I'm reaching for. They're just so good. So coming in at number 11, I have the Spring Magic palette. This is a palette that came out this year and love the fun cover art with this hands holding these skull blossoms, super creative. They have released now a handful of palettes in this size. So this is kind of their biggest palette that they have going right now. A really good balance of 50-50 split of matte to shimmers. Now, of course the top row is not my favorite and that's I think why maybe this isn't going up higher is it's a lot of blue. The middle row is really pretty because it is browns and greens. And then down at the bottom, we have the rosy tones. The shimmers in this are so, 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 so good. The mattes are really pretty. Apart from, well, actually even that, it's not as dark as it looks on camera. There's no like real deep dark matte in this either. So that's another reason why I'm not putting it super high, but we do have like a white, which I do love. Can clearly create a neutral look with this. And every time I did create a neutral look with this, I loved it and yeah, just great. Really, really good quality. All right, we're in the top 10 now and coming in at number 10, I have the Not Normal palette. This is coming in so high, even though this is the old formula and they did recently release this palette with their new and improved formula and new shades as well. And I'm very interested in purchasing that palette at some point. I can't really swing it right now, but at some point I absolutely wanna pick it up because this color story is one of my favorite color stories they've ever done. And even the new one that they're doing is so beautiful as well. The only thing about this that I would change and that problem has been fixed because of the new formula is the shimmers in this aren't top tier to me, but there are only four shimmers in this entire palette. It's very matte heavy. I love purples, I love neutrals, I love greens. You're getting that here. And it is a little more cool tone leaning without being gray based. And another thing that I'm really happy about with the new version is it's not quite as large. So they've taken their bigger palettes and made them a little smaller. The pans in these, like in their old, old palettes are very, very large. I will never pan a palette, so I don't need pans this large, but yeah, let me know if you picked up the new Not Normal. Let me know how you're liking it. I'm willing to bet it's great because this, like this color story, one of my favorites they've ever done. I'm very interested to pick it up in their new formula, but even the old formula is still really good. Speaking of new formulas, coming in at number nine is the palette that I'm wearing on my eyes today. And this is the Lore palette. Now, this is the new 
formula. They've updated their formula in some of their older palettes. Uh, Amanda did give, Amanda's the owner of Unearthly. She did give me this palette earlier this year, but prior to her giving this to me, I had the old formula and it was my very first purchase I ever bought from Unearthly was the Lore. Uh, I remember seeing the cover art and being like, wow, this is so cool. This is so different than so many brands that I've seen out there. I remember wearing this for dance competitions because it is a little more bright and vibrant, but I did use this palette on my eyes today. And as you can see, you can get more of a neutral leaning look. I don't think this is completely neutral because it is quite orange, but for me, it's, it's consider, I consider it neutral leaning. The, the shimmer that's on my lid is Griffin right here. Absolutely stunning. And the old formula, again, the shimmers were good, but this is, Great. Mattes are good. Um, these two shades, they do look different on the eyes. I don't feel that they look different enough that we, we need both of them. Like I wish maybe this shade was something else. I, I'm not sure what, maybe, maybe like a, a mid-tone green or something or a brown, but two oranges in such a small palette maybe wouldn't have been my first choice. Of course, it's not my palette. I didn't create it. But with that being said, uh, I really love this palette. Again, I have some more like memories with it because it was my very first Unearthly palette, but a still really, really good nine pan palette. Coming in at number eight is one of their newest palettes, and that is the Gargoyle palette. This was their Halloween launch for 2024. Love the cover. I said this last time, has anyone ever watched the show Gargoyles? Because I used to watch it as a kid, and that's what it reminds me of. I don't think it's meaning to be. And then on the inside, we have this absolutely gorgeous, like dark, rainy, Halloween-esque color story. Again, I don't have to repeat myself a thousand times, this bottom row, it's all blue. So, you know, I could take it or leave it, but I did create a blue look with this palette and I really like how it came out. The middle row is more like greens and purples, and then the top row is neutrals, which I love. I do love that she has been putting a lot of neutrals in these larger palettes because for me personally, I love to be able to get a neutral look and a colorful look out of a palette. So I can do that with this and I just can't deny how absolutely stunning this quality is. It is the top quality that I hold all palettes to. Like this newest formula from Unearthly, both mattes and shimmers, just stunning. And it's laid out well. We have light, mid-tone, and deep mattes. We have a, uh, like a dark, almost black. I don't think it's quite black, but it, it shows up really dark on the eyes. This one I can use as an inner corner highlight. If I want a matte inner corner highlight, there's also an iridescent duochrome shimmer called Awake. Is it duochrome or multichrome? It is so beautiful. So beautiful. So yeah, I mean, this is a great quality palette. And if you are a blue, yeah, look at that. It's not even really showing up on camera, but if you are a blue lover, you would not be disappointed in that. Coming in at number seven, I have the Fairy Frolic palette. So this one is also a very old palette, old. I don't even want to tell you when I bought this and I only really used it for the first time, I believe this year. That's kind of embarrassing to say, but this color story, neutrals with a twist in my opinion. <laughs> and even though it's the old formula, I still think it's good. Matte's really good, a little more hard press in the pan so they don't come off super, super pigmented, but they're easy to build up, they're easy to blend, and the shimmers are really pretty. Um, even though they are the old formula, I do think that these are a little more stepped up than some of the other palettes that are in the old formula. There still is shine, yeah. There still is shine to the metallics. All of the metallics in this palette are just standard metallics. There's no duochromes, there's no multichromes, which honestly, great. Sometimes when all of the shades in a palette shift, it's hard for me to necessarily like predict how it's going to look with the mattes. It's not as easy to throw looks together mindlessly compared to when it's just a standard metallic where you're looking at the pan and that's what's gonna show up on your eyelid. Does that make sense? I hope so. So yeah, love this color story. I really like the quality actually, even though it is the old formula, still really like it. All right, coming in at number six, I have the Dreamer palette. So yeah, the top six, let's just say from here on out, these are all my favorite, ultimate favorites, ultimate, ultimate favorites. Depending on the day, all of these could switch around. Honestly, even the top couple, like 
These are all my favorites. They have a chokehold on me, let's put it that way. So this is the Dreamer palette. This one came out at the very end of last year, and this is a little more cool tone leaning, but again, I don't think it's all gray tones, which isn't my favorite uh, type of tone, but there are some grays. We have Dream State where I believe this is like the first holographic shade that they did. Oh my goodness. So, so beautiful. We have some purples. We have some neutrals with a pop of pink. This is, in my opinion, kind of like a neutral palette with a twist. Uh, if you like more muted colors, if you like purples, if you like rosy tones, and you want to be able to like incorporate a cool toned look over here. I did create a look, I think, using this quad and it came out so gorgeous, but yeah. Phenomenal quality, like the new, new quality and really, really pretty color story. Very interesting color story and, but without being like super bright, like if you're not, not someone who wants bright color, but you want muted color, this is a good one. Coming in at number five, I have the Sorceress Smoke Palette. Uh, again, came out the end of last year and this one is definitely neutral leaning, neutrals with a twist some olive greens, which are my favorite greens to wear are olive greens. I don't know what it is, just like that color in clothing, in makeup. I just love the color olive green. So we've got some of those. We have some warmer neutrals and then we have some more like cooler leaning neutrals that are still brown. We have a multi-chrome here, nightshade and another kind of holographic shade, but we have a mix of regular shimmers as well as some special shimmers. This is definitely a, something that I would suggest to someone that is more really sticking to neutrals and you want really just straight up neutrals. You don't want any colorful tones. This is a great palette to reach for. Phenomenal quality, the top quality that Unearthly has. I don't need to keep repeating myself with that and an absolutely stunning neutral palette that's not all browns. Coming in at number four, I have the Fall Magic Remastered palette. Again, came, on, came out right kind of at the same time as these two at the end of last year. Once again, I would call this neutrals with the twist, but this one has even more variety in my opinion than Sorcerer Smoke. This one I would suggest to color lovers as well as neutral lovers, because you are able to get a neutral look and colorful look out of this. I love all of the selection of the mattes. This is a remastered version of one of their original palettes, which is the Fall Magic palette, which spoiler alert, I own that palette and I have not mentioned it yet, so. Needless to say, I love that palette, but when they came out with this, I thought they did it so well. It's not the same as that palette, but it, it captures the essence of it while still giving different tones. This shade Forage, which is like a pukey greenish yellow, love, love, love it. We have some deeper tones and we have some mid tones. I will say there's not like a super light matte in here, which is something I would kind of wish for, but it works. Like the mattes, this new matte formula from Unearthly, if you go in very lightly, you can share them out. They're easy to manipulate, which is the sign of a good matte. And all of the shimmers in this are special shimmers, which again, I kind of wish maybe there were some standard shimmers, but stunning. I can't deny how stunning it is. Coming in at number three, I have a palette that came out pretty recently, and this is the High Temp palette. I love, if I am gonna wear bright colors, I love warm tones. And this, oh my goodness, this top row, color story-wise, so good. Formula-wise, mind-blowing. They are as pigmented as they look in the pan, but they're not hard to work with. This red, it's not patchy. It's not hard to blend. Yeah, I created a look with this top row and it was one of my favorite looks I've ever done. Honestly, just, I was gasping. <laughs> this down here is something that's a little more unexpected when you look at this palette. We have more a neutral look you can create, but it's a little more mauve leaning, which is really, really nice. I love the setup of this where it is matte heavy, definitely my preference, light, mid-tone to deep, even this deep brown, you can use with these tones to deepen it up. Very versatile to have that one deep matte that works with everything. The shimmers in this is exactly what I would want. We have two standard shimmers here, a dual chrome and a multi-chrome. Perfect. We have some lighter ones, we have a mid-tone, and we have a deep. This to me is a perfect, super bright, colorful, and neutral palette, balanced super well with phenomenal quality. Okay, top two palettes. These are the top two 
Like these were the two that came to mind immediately, but deciding between them is very difficult. And I would again, put them pretty equally. I don't really feel like one is really beating the other by a whole long shot or anything like that. I think they're both pretty close neck and neck. But in this moment, my number two palette is the leather and lace palette. In my opinion, there's so much to love about this. I won't go, this video is already so long, but if I was gonna create my own palette, I would draw from this palette for inspiration because to me, this is laid out in a way that is so, so helpful to me at least. We have three very clear rows, three very clear color stories, three very clear cohesive looks that you can create. Three mattes that are in gradient order with a corresponding shimmer that you can use on the lid, you can use in the inner corner, whatever you want. Um, this is also, by the way, in their new formula. I did own previously the old formula and the old formula is still really good. Um, <laughs> but this new formula, the shimmers are definitely improved, definitely stepped up. These two shimmers are standard shimmers. This shimmer Chantilly is a duochrome. It is like a super light yellow with the pink reflect. I remember using this in my inner corner and just thinking like how absolutely beautiful and unique of a shade that is, uh, but also all over the lid would be really, really beautiful as well. I love greens, I love purples, and I love warm tone neutrals. So that has all that I need here in this palette. The only thing that I think I would change is I would take the lightest shade like this column and make it just like a little bit lighter because these three shades for my skin tone, they're not quite the perfect transition shade for me. But again, if I go in with a fluffy brush with the light hand, I can share them out. But yeah, this is laid out in such a beautiful way. It has the colors that I personally love. It's matte heavy and all of the shimmers here just complement the looks so well and are the really good quality. And coming in at number one, can I get a drum roll please? I already kind of hinted at what it is and it's no longer available. It's been discontinued for a long time. So I would say this leather and lace palette is my favorite palette that they still have in their lineup. But of all the palettes that I have from Unearthly, my favorite palette is the original Fall Magic. I know it's kind of anticlimactic because it's been discontinued for years. I actually think I picked this up at the last restock. Again, I want to say 2022, 2021, something like that. This, okay, so like I said, the Fall Magic Remastered looks like this. So as you can see, they're not the same, right? But they have similar feelings. They both have a deep dark green. They both have like a really pretty shade. This shade Cozy, which is similar, it's not quite the same as the shade Cozy. This shade Cozy is definitely more pink. The shade Cozy in the original Fall Magic is the most beautiful like muted warm pink. It is so, so interesting. I've not really seen another palette with this shade. And we have these two stunning browns. We have more of like a burnt orange, more of a muted orange. We have two really stunning purples. We have the shade Cashmere, which is a standard metallic that is definitely more just like straight up smooth. There's no like sparkle to it. There's no reflect. It is just a gorgeous, like oh, sophisticated, taupey brown. Then we have some really stunning metallics, like Autumn is a standard metallic. It is like a orange. And then we have three special shades. The, they're all, I don't know if they're multichromes or duochromes, but they are all so, so beautiful. I'm just gonna swatch them. I mean, I'm here, right? Might as well. They were really doing something back then. I mean, again, this is before this is before the, the, you know, the reformulation. And I feel like this is the only palette in their line from back then that has this formula, at least that I have. The quality of the shimmers is so good. The mattes are really good. They are, again, I think maybe slightly different formula where they pick up really nice on the brush. They're more silky, more um, buildable, but really easy to work with. This is a palette full of muted colors. You can get neutral looks, you can get colorful looks, but they're not super bright in your face colorful looks. And this is the epitome of fall to me, just fall leaves. I love this palette so much. I will never declutter it, okay? You can pry it from my cold dead hands, but I will say I do think the remastered version is also really stunning. Not the same, but still really pretty. 
yeah, I love it. All right, and that is it for this unearthly palette ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to know again what your favorite palettes from the brand are. Let me know because I love hearing from you. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing before you leave. I do upload videos weekly and I'd love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Damn, this shit gonna be hard to hold up. Oh my God.